Zambia is known for producing professional talented boxers since the time of Loti Mwale, who opened doors and inspired many in the boxing world. Well, it been said and written about uh, the rhetoric past history. We've had very good pedigree of boxing in Zambia. We've had the Chandamuti, the Lord Mwales, the Champs Teori. I don't think there's any belt that has not passed through Zambia in this country. We would have had multi billionaires today as we're talking of boxing. Hilary Kataya is a boxer born in the Copper Belt Chingola on the 10th of February 1995. He is inspired by his father Elias Kataya, who was a boxer and coach. Uh, my dad uh, was a coach, so him being a coach, so I grew up in a, in a house uh, so close, so I go into countries, they can box us out, so it did inspire me to, to become a world champion. Like, he has trained a lot of boxers who are champions by now. Um, I've got a, uh, we, we have uh, uh, boxing connections globally and we have a boxer here by the name of uh, Hiroli Kataya. I boxed uh, with his father uh, who was uh, uh, a national team coach for Zambia for 10 years probably, somewhere around there and uh, the young man is doing very well. Hillary started his boxing career in 2015 with 200 amateur fights. He moved on to professional fights locally and internationally with Zimbabwe and Malawi. I've had three fights. My first fight was in Zimbabwe. I went for six rounds. My uh, sister Zimbabwe, uh, Leah Piri, I won by unanimous points. Okay. Yeah, then my second fight I went for after sporting the talented young man coach kevin situmbeko took over as kataya's coach and anchanga boxing club Mr. Situmbeko's belief has led him to coach and train Kataya into building his boxing career and ensuring his physical strength is ready to fight any opponent. In African tournaments, European tournaments, and uh, now that uh, his son is uh, of age to fight, he's been a boxer, an amateur boxer, is now a professional boxer. So I decided to take him up. Um, his father is my assistant coach. And uh, he is a young man. So. Uh, we have uh, a promotional uh, contact in London. Uh, uh, a coach is going to take up my position. He's called Steve Gibbs. And uh, Steve Gibbs is going to keep him for the next uh, three, six months. And uh, he's got a couple of fights coming up in London and probably in the USA. Um, he's a good fighter and um, you can see a couple of his clips that uh, are running, you can see how he throws in the ring and um, we've done a couple of uh, few strength exercises, asymmetric exercises, uh, strength and power punches that builds power and strength and big arms, the boy is good. Coming from a boxing background, I'll tell you, um, financially, uh, our infrastructure, you can see in a gym where we are, we are right now, uh, because of people that have got love of boxing, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, lifestyle, the owners who support this place have got a heart of sport, so it's only about finances. To promote these boys, we need a lot of finances. To fly a boxer from here to London, to fly a boxer from here into um, Miami, New York, Atlanta, you, you're talking of a lot of money. We invested a lot of time on the young man to get him a contract for the next three years. is is, is, is not a, a stone throw away from, from my home. It, it's something that is, uh, has uh, put uh, us into um, different communications. Uh, you require precision, you require intellectual input, you require, you require uh, 
um, advice from professionals. So we've consulted at length. And the other thing is the boxing board itself. It needs to be a bit flexible in terms of their policies. We've had people sitting in there for a long time who, of course, we appreciate their input. We would like to see some flexibility of, you know, retirement and give room to younger guys who've got understanding professionals, people who understand what sports is all about. Because we are looking at nutrition here, we are looking at uh, uh, psychological effects of boxes, uh, backgrounds also. Um, these are the few things that we need to understand. We need to have, you know, parallel associations that who argumentatively come across a certain uh, acts and policies that are sitting in that boxing board uh, manifesto that is probably was done to make sure that somebody should not be sitting on this uh, platform and uh, because he's training uh, the, the younger boxers, he's not supposed to be sitting on the board. All that is just uh, uh, a hinder to progress. And we need people who have understanding of what finances are because you need to know that uh, we are not going for this just for, for, for the boxing. We are going in to bring in uh, financial income. I mean, if you look at Mayweather, if you look at uh, other boxers, we just had a boxing fight right now uh, between World and Fury. That's a million dollar fight. Um, in boxing now, you win, you lose, you still make your money. So let's, 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 let's be realistic and accept that sport is also education. Sport is also um, a transient sport that, that can get people uh, reach higher heights because the lowest point of other people's uh, uh, lifestyle is, is actually the topic of others. So we should not just be saying uh, you need uh, to structure these things because you, 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 you have what you have. What we're looking at is we need to help these guys reach higher heights. We've had a boxer recently who, who went into um, ZAF, uh, our professional boxer. We, we, we're still struggling to understand where this is going to end because uh, she walked away from a professional fight that is going to make her a million dollars uh, that she, she can wait for, 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 for the next 20 years in one fight. So we need to uh, diversify. Let's have a perennium of uh, uh, thought process where people can understand that this also can make an income for them. So that's what we're looking at. Policy, uh, restructure the boxing board. Um, uh, look, you, if you walk into the boxing board today, it's not an environment that is uh, challenging for a boxer. To, to me, I find it very uh, uh, comfortable to actually feel um, I'm a board chair and I'm sitting on a rotting chair. I, I want to feel comfortable that I can sponsor a boxer. You see, these things are quite very challenging. It's, it's so stressful. So we need boxers to feel comfortable. That's why we have a gym here. We have a young boxer like this one, looking good, looking fit. At my age, about 50, I'm, I'm feeling younger. So let's, let's be realistic. We need, we need to make these boys feel comfortable. Kataya dreams of boxing on a bigger level as he describes his journey as tough and giving up is not in his vocabulary. Although he might face challenges, his spirit and passion for boxing would take him to greater heights. Yeah, I want to fight the best, I want to fight the big boxers in the world, like as in my category of the lightweight, I would like to fight uh, the lightweight champions in the world, the, the Vaisal of Mashenko, yeah, those likes of boxers, I would like to take them up, the, the Dan Davis, yeah. Okay, In the efforts to build Kataya's career, Kevin Situmbeko, his coach, has linked Kataya to fight in London, Germany, where he is expected in December 2021. Uh, when I go there, I just want to do the best. Just want to do the best. Become the, the world champion. Yes, that's my, that's my goal, that's my dream. I want to become a world champion. And I want to make my, my country proud. Kataya has been hired to fight on an international level where he will be coached by Steve Keeps in London, who will take over from Situmbeko. <music> Zambia is yet to see another icon in the boxing sector. He hopes to be the light that brings back the fire into the sector on an international scale representing Zambia. 
from what you have seen and what you'll be seeing from a few clips of his sparring and uh, the kind of strength exercises he's doing. You can see what kind of a boxer we are bringing you globally. And uh, he's coming after the best boxers. So be very careful and watch out for the young man because he's gonna smash you up.
that is, is good. Yeah. Taking salads after training, I train two, two times a day. Uh, only less than uh, on a uh, Sunday. That's when I. That's good. What, what we look at, look, I, I think in my growing up, we had, um, I don't know what it was, but it was, it was some form of uh, PE, and uh, we had competitions. Uh, I remember at my school, uh, we, we, we did compete with a school uh, that was coming from Northern Province. Uh, we did some boxing for quite a while, uh, and, and we were propping up good boxes from there. So we need to come up with uh, scholarships, some initiatives that uh, we can initiate to finance uh, uh, these boxers uh, and uh, use that as a route to get them into school. Because look, uh, we have um, uh, ex-orders where I used to uh, uh, coordinate some training with uh, late Anton Mwamba. He had a crop of about 120 young boxers. Right now we have uh, youth competition that is going on at the uh, Independence Stadium. Uh, the boys are going into Lesotho for fighting. Those are youths. And um, I'm seeing a number of them spending the whole day there without a meal and doing nothing. Uh, so we want the sports minister to pass through there, uh, tap in, ask them. You, you'll be very surprised. We, most of these boxers are qualified. They are four fives. Uh, some of them are grade nine dropouts. There's a lot they can do. You know, uh, We need to come up with some, some educational program that uh, gives them uh, free scholarships uh, into high highs and uh, further their, their careers.